So the last video I talked about Enzyme and uh, while making that video I was actually kind of looking for the version 1.0 and uh, lo and behold uh, did the video and then there was a huge uh, update and uh, a website to go with it. Uh, you're looking at it right now, Enzyme.org and uh, it's pretty cool. So in the last video I was just showing how Enzyme uh, worked with Elasticsearch, uh, Elasticsearch and um, gray logs, uh, but now uh, the version 1.0 enzyme is its whole uh, wireless intrusion detection, threat monitoring, uh, forensic system all in one. I mean, it can still be combined with uh, gray logs, but uh, I'm going to take a look at this. And um, I've already pretty much got everything set up for you in the uh, Wyvern. Uh, image that I've uh, been kind of throwing on uh, Google Drive for the uh, Pi and um, so very minimal uh, configuration to at least get you up and running and then you can tweak it as needed uh, but you can kind of see here what all uh, it offers uh, really not too much on the first page but the documentation page we'll take a look at and so the installation is pretty much already done um, we're just gonna SSH the Pi that's running the a new uh, Wyvern image that uh, I want to upload here with the default username Ubuntu and password of Dragon. And so we're in. Uh, I did some other updates and some other additions to this image that I'll talk about uh, or at least put in the readme file. The, the only unfortunate thing is the uh, Nexmon patches uh, doesn't seem to be available when you're using the 20.04 Arch64 image uh, which is what I built Wyvern on uh, for the Pi. So I have a, an alpha card, uh, one of these old gray Alpha cards plugged in a uh, let's see it's a AWU S zero three six H is the model and so that's plugged in and we'll take a look at that here in a second uh, we'll skip down step one two three um, four the post SQL or Postgres SQL is already installed uh, in Dragon OS. Uh, the database, everything is already made, just like the directions point out here. Uh, I did put the user as Enzyme with the password, uh, just en Enzyme spelled backwards. So you can at least get into the database and change that as needed. Um, the only thing we'll want to do is we'll take a look at the Enzyme configuration file, which I've left. Uh, in the Etsy folder here, there's uh, one for a tracker as well, and I'll do that in a later video. I'm going to kind of break these down a couple different uh, videos. Um, and we're going to leave this as the leader, so the Pi is just going to be the all in one solution here. The admin password hash I've already made, which the password is in fact just password. If you want to regenerate that, you can look at the uh, directions right on this line here and you can create uh, a new uh, entry that you could paste here. Um, this is the line that's referenced in the uh, username and password already configured. So we'll come down. There's some alerting features that can be activated. Um, the rest listen URL and the HTTP external URL I'm going to change that to the IP address of the Pi and you could do this in your case that way you can reach it from an external uh, browser you can uh, secure uh, set up HTTPS and there's some directions uh, at the link that it mentions here and you can change and use TLS I'm not going to do that for this uh, video. If you did uh, want to do an uplink to Graylog, that's where you would do that here. And let's see. So it took me a second, but uh, figured out this is like a, an array. You can put as many monitors as you want in there. Each one uh, could be uh, looking at different channels. In this case, I'm going to use WLAN 1 because that's the alpha card. 
and I'll leave everything else as is. Uh, once you get it up and running for a while, just like it kind of tells you here, you could configure it to specific networks that you want to look at um, and monitor. And uh, we'll kind of look at that on the uh, web interface as we go along here. And that should be about it there. That's all you really need to do to get up and running. Uh, let's see, let's take a look. You can um, go through the other uh, options and settings here, but that's pretty much all we need to do to get up and running on the Pi here. Now all you have to do is, and we'll just, you can enable it, the service, if you want to last uh, reboots. And we'll start the enzyme service. All right, let's go ahead and pull up a page to the interface. It should be on port by default 22900. Default username, admin, password, log in. And so we see we've got a system status of red. So one thing that I've noticed, uh, and there's probably some other configuration that can be done uh, when I plug another uh, external um, USB card into the Pi. I'll just do sudo ifconfig wlam1 up. We can do a sudo system CTL restart the enzyme service let it load So this is the uh, importance which uh, Enzyme uh, talks about of specifying your interfaces and making them, I think it's called persistent, so I'm just guessing that um, my Pi interface in so we're green and uh, so basically what happened there is exactly what the uh, enzyme developer talks about where the uh, cards can get flip-flopped uh, in the in the pie well really anything but uh, so that's something I'll have to uh, work out but this is the uh, interface that's all running from the Pi and the new Enzyme version 1.0. We can see the devices. Uh, if I were to click on networks, which I'll just go ahead and do and then blur out after the fact. But uh, so here you'll see all the networks that uh, are being uh, seen in the area. You can uh, click on them get more information, uh, see what the SSIDs are, um, you can drill down even further, get uh, their fingerprints that you can uh, build into the uh, configuration file and then of course you got your alerts if you had configured and uh, uh, bandits where you can add um, trackers which um, you can see what it's uh, kind of comparing to um, you can 
frequency right there, description of behavior and characteristic of device that advertises networks. Don't have a tracker configured yet. Um, that'll be maybe in another video I'll put together. Uh, so the tracker, I've got LoRa devices, um, and I'll be able to communicate from my main wireless defense system out to a remote device uh, that's going and looking for somebody that's you know doing something malicious uh, to my network or a device that's doing something uh, that is being characterized as a, a bandit. And then system status, um, just kind of an overall uh, what's been collected so far, metrics, so on and so forth. Um, that is a really quick uh, run through, uh, but this looks like a very powerful tool when set up properly and you know more time put into the configuration files for monitoring of the network. Uh, the other thing I'll point out is in the there's a uh, log file logs just right in, uh, that's being created and so in there there's some uh, rotation happening and that uh, um, we'll see all the uh, PCAP, I believe it is. Uh, well, actually, that was being zipped up, but uh, in var log enzyme, there's a, a, a log there as well. And you can kind of see what's going on there. So, all right, uh, I'll do a few of these videos. Ultimately, I want to get the whole system set up. Um, I'll have a, a tracker the uh, leader which is the all-in-one you know, the monitoring solution and then I also want to take all that information and feed it back to Elasticsearch and gray logs like I've did in the past. Alright, uh, I think that's it. Thanks.